What is up, Average Gang? It is your boy Chris, back at it again with another video. Today, we're gonna talk about why Tobey Maguire, to me, is the best Spider-Man out of the whole Spider-Man universe, out of all the movies. You, you get what I'm saying. So, without further ado, if you like this video, make sure you share it, and comment down below, what was your favorite Spider-Man movie? I, I'm curious, so yeah, let's get to this video. Out of all the three Spideys, to me, Toby played the role of the real Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. I'm gonna discuss first on why Tom Holland and Andrew Garfield doesn't come close to Toby Maguire as a suitable character of playing Spider-Man and Peter Parker. First off, the problem with Andrew Garfield, his Spider-Man wasn't even like Spider-Man, if that makes any sense. They try to show him that he's socially awkward and that he's easily bullied, like in the comics, but he was too confident because in the beginning of Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, my fault, it shows that he was standing up to Flash Thompson so much in the movie without his powers. This Peter having too much level of confidence in himself, the movie still wants you to believe that he's socially awkward, but it really doesn't work. His origin is really a big switch up from the comics. He knew that he was gonna be at the right place at the right time when he went on the field trip to go explore what his dad was working on. And knowing that his father was working on the spider really downplayed it for me because Peter was never supposed to be a chosen one. They made him feel like it was his destiny to get bit in this movie. When in the original story, Peter was just some kid who got lucky when he got bit by the spider. And he took that luck with advantage and changed his whole mindset to save the world. Amazing Spider-Man really didn't value that at all. I felt like he was supposed to be Spider-Man in the beginning in the movie for a Peter Parker origin story and it really threw me off. And the biggest problem with this Spidey is he's too cool, he's a skater and his personality is so chill. And he's also he also breaks a lot of promises like when he promised Officer Stacy to stay away from his daughter Gwen Stacy forever, he promised him right in front of his eyes before his death. And this example shows that this Spider-Man is selfish. Instead of his self-sacrificing ways and his humble sensibility, if he left Gwen alone, she wouldn't be dead. So next up is Tom Holland, my favorite one. He's really the brightest out of both in my opinion, but he's nowhere near the definition of Spider-Man, not in a million years. Hear me out. How he is set up in the MCU is the reason why he doesn't actually play the role right. He's a sidekick. Iron Man is his mentor. Tony Stark gives him all the gadgets. Tony basically made Spider-Man in the MCU. He made his iconic suit just for Peter, which is a turnoff. I really don't take this Spider-Man seriously. He, re he relies too much on help from Tony and even his suit as well, having a built-in computer system called Karen when he named in the movie Home and Homecoming. This is the true, this is not the true Spidey we all know and love. He's more of a helping made Spider-Man than a, the original made Spider-Man. There was a time in the comics when Peter did get help from Tony, but that was when he was already married. He was already, he was already in the field. So yeah, like my boy comic fan Nicholas said, Tom Holland, he's like a Deku in his story. It's a kid who grows up in a world admiring superheroes mainly the most big hero All Might being like Iron Man in his perspective. Like how Peter wanted to be like Iron Man and how Midoriya wanted to be like All Might. Okay, on to Toby now. In the beginning of the movie, you could tell right off the bat, he was a socially shy, unmotivated genius pushover because of the way he acts. You can tell very clear that he's really not good at talking to people. You can obviously tell he's that he's not the chill and rad skateboarding Andrew Garfield at all. He's just Peter, the true Peter Parker. The Peter that is shy, antisocial, and a mad genius, and a coward. Harry had to back him up all the time when he was caught up with bullies. So he's basically set up to be the real Peter Parker in the comics. For the movie, the way Peter was shown to be before his powers, an antisocial nerd who was easily pushed over and he cannot stand for himself, then he ends up getting the powers not by faith at all. Nothing to do with his parents, just a guy who got bit by a radioactive spider. Then when his powers develop and he starts to use them, he's starting to get more confident in how he starts to talk to Mary Jane. He signs up for wrestling to impress her. 
He signs up, wins, gets the money, but doesn't get all the money he deserves. He lets a thief go due to Peter's being angry because of the money that he didn't get. He really only cared about money, saying that he only cares about number one, which is him. This karma led his Uncle Ben being shot down and dead. It was really the Sandman, though. But if Peter still would have let that guy go, Ben would have still died either way. So Peter lets the criminal go. The criminal kills his uncle, giving Peter an important lesson of with great power comes great responsibility and decides to turn his life around for the good of New York. This is what made Peter a hero. It was not some hero he idolized on TV or the ones he's seen saving the day or even in the comic books. His goal was not to impress any other hero like Tom Holland does. It's because he screwed up, so he commits his life to never screwing up again to the point where he throws his future dreams away just to protect the city and his responsibility of Spider-Man. At the end of Spider-Man, Mary Jane confesses to Peter that she loves him. Peter had a crush on Mary Jane since middle school. It was very shocking for him for her to say that. But he says no because he does not want her to be in danger, unlike Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, that he promised someone he would stay away from Gwen. This Peter didn't have to go through promises. He just did it because he felt like it was the right thing to do. That is the self-sacrificing Spider-Man and the original Spider-Man we all know. At some point when he takes on being Spider-Man for a long time, he goes through a lot of anxiety attacks and depression, causing him to quit being Spidey for a little and throws his costume away in the comics. So they adapted it in the second Sam Raimi film as well. Peter having depression and quitting to be Spidey causes him to have a mental blockage that shuts his powers off and whenever he realizes he needs them and when he realizes he needs to be Spider-Man, they come back. So they show that in Spider-Man 2 as well. He doesn't want his powers back. He doesn't want that responsibility anymore. It's killing him in the inside mentally, so he quits until he realizes he can't, he just can't quit. This is his responsibility he can't walk away from. This is something he has to do for the rest of his life. As he always says, I will always be Spider-Man. So he gets his abilities back and motivated as ever, and he becomes Spidey again. Toby showcases something different than all the other Peters, his anger. In the comics, when anyone does something to Peter so traumatizing, he nearly goes insta-kill mode, making him almost unstoppable against his opponents. His rage takes over his whole mental aspect, but in the Raimi trilogy, when Green Goblin, on, in the ending of Spider-Man 1, he explained to Peter that Mary Jane is next. Peter loses to the Green Goblin, but he went rage mode, and he turns the tables on Green Goblin. The threat and insult that the Green Goblin said about Mary Jane gave Peter more strength and determination as, again, we can see in the comics. Toby overall is the original Peter slash Spider-Man. Thomas is really just a sidekick and Andrew Garfield doesn't even play Peter Parker or Spider-Man right. He's more of a flashy base character. What is up Average Gang once again? If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe if you're new and share it to your friends if you like Spider-Man. Have a wonderful day. Peace, stay average. One more day one for me. I've been your hero, I landed you comfortably. Yeah. If I'm falling off, I'm bringing in songs for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm a king amongst lords, they keep me across from me. Yeah. Huh. What do they want from me? Yeah. To my girl, I'm a demon, so you better run from me. Yeah. I'm not picking no sides, I be who I wanna be. Yeah. Mitchell Ness on my cap, I feel like I'm major league.